Dominic's given us a, a, a perspective that comes largely from his role as being a partner at KPMG in advising. We thought it would be useful to counterbalance that, or at least complement that rather, by um, asking two panellists to join Dominique, who are going to talk about what it's like to be in the business and some of the challenges that they faced and the opportunity to share with you some of their personal stories. So I'm going to ask uh, Claire and Tim Mackay to join us in a moment. I'll see if I can introduce them. They are both principals at Quantum Financial and to explain the shared surname, they are brother and sister. I'll start by introducing Claire, if I may. Uh, she's a director at Quantum and the head of advice uh, in that business. Uh, Quantum, by the way, is Australia's or one of Australia's leading independent financial planning practices, and which was established in 1994 by her father, Bill. Uh, in 2015, Claire was recognised as Australia's best financial planner. She currently sits on ASIC's external advisory panel. She also serves on the ATO's super, superannuation industry relationship network, and she serves on the Professional Standards and Conduct Committee at the Financial Planners Association. She is also an adjunct lecturer in financial planning at Macquarie University. Prior to working at Quantum, Claire worked in structured tax at Macquarie Bank and at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Her brother, Tim, uh, is also a director at Quantum and is the head of strategy. Uh, Tim primarily works with retirees and pre-retirees to help them to fund their dream retirement. In 2014, Tim was recognised as Australia's best self-managed super fund advisor. For those of you who are interested in the business, in 2012, Quantum Financial was awarded the New South Wales Chamber of Business State Ethics Award. And returning to Tim, prior to joining Quantum, Tim was an equity analyst at Deutsche Bank in London and New York, and has also worked with UBS and HSBC in their London office. Would you please jo uh, join me in welcoming Tim and Claire to the panel. Welcome, you guys. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, maybe just for context, um, I was going to ask what year was a business founded, but Marcel told us that in the introduction. Um, but perhaps what generation? I is the founder still in the business? So what how would you describe yourselves as what generation the business is in? Um, so yeah, our father started the business in 94. Um, he convinced our mum to join the business. Um, my father now is no longer facing clients. He has a select few that he meets and uh, they have a chat that, you know, as founders tend to do, they um, have the, the privilege of not having to do any of the, the work nowadays. But he certainly is our chairman and he's involved in the business in, in a leadership and mentoring role. Um, my brother and I are, are in the business, we're working together. Um, we're, we're, we're good at that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're second generation. Uh, yeah. The third generation is only sort of 11 years old, so we're not yeah. down that track yet. Uh, but we are certainly the second generation and a lot of the issues that you highlighted on those slides are issues that uh, we've grappled with and, and faced along the way and a lot of them sounded familiar to us. Yeah. Very good. In terms of the business, where, where do you think the business is in the context of a life cycle? Do you think it's still on the growth, grow, grow phase or go, go phase? Where would you place it? It's interesting. So dad, it was a very stable business um, with, with Dad um, and before we joined the business it was incredibly stable. Um, he's a visionary. Um, the way he established our business back in 94, in light of what people now know about financial planning, he set our business up back in 94 to avoid a lot of the conflicts that, uh, that the industry is now grappling with. So from a structural perspective, we, we, we don't have those issues in terms because we are an independent firm. Um, so he was a visionary, but it was a very stable business before we joined the business. Yeah. I'd say, I mean, on that graph, I'd say adolescent to prime, okay. uh, sort of uh, significant, dealing with significant growth issues. Uh, but certainly, he was the visionary, he was a doer, um, processes not so much, um, sort of too busy sort of doing and succeeding at doing. Uh, and I suppose when we came in, I, I, that graph again, I, I, I did. Um, 
feel that it represented us. Our focus was, was slightly different coming in, away from that, I mean, clearly doing and the visionary, but the actual processes and the systems mm. sort of corporatizing uh, the business was, was very much our focus as well. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So what was the catalyst um, for the succession planning? What, what was the catalyst for you guys getting involved? There was a couple of catalysts. Um, from our father's perspective, uh, he'd had a couple of uh, offers from financial institutions and so that sort of brought things to a head that uh, we need, needed to make a decision about where we stood in things. He'd made a, a decision early on in the family that uh, he would never let us join the business unless um, we had gone and proven ourselves elsewhere. Uh, in his words, uh, he wanted someone else to pay for our mistakes, um, which, yeah. And, um, I, in, and pay for our training. Yeah, and pay for our training, which was, was not insubstantial. Um, and so effectively, from his perspective, uh, he needed to have that discussion. From my perspective, I'd been overseas for seven years. I'd, I'd been working in investment banking. Uh, I'd gone and done my MBA, so I came out of that thinking I knew everything. Um, learned bit later that I really didn't, uh, but it helped. And then, um, so from my perspective, coming back to Australia was a catalyst. Uh, when I was doing my MBA, a part of me always wanted to run my own business. And when I um, graduated, we were lucky enough to have uh, George Soros come along and speak to us. Uh, he was a friend of the Dean. And um, one of my mates asked him, if you were graduating today, what would you do? And uh, the response was, I'd, I'd go and work for a financial institution, become an insider, so you understand how the system processes work, and then go and do whatever you want to do, you know, what you're passionate about. And I thought, well, geez, that's pretty much what Dad has been telling me to do for years. So I thought, well, maybe Dad no actually does know something. <laughs> um, and so that's, that, that was the position I was in. So I'd, I'd done my time in financial institutions. I knew I wanted to run my own business, and it was a confluence of, uh, of, 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 of those things. Thank you.